Do you wave your terrible towel when Renegade plays? Reach for a tasty cake when JJ shouts, he scores! Does the sound of an F1 engine make your heart race? Doing push-ups with the Nittany Lion after a TD? Then lend us an ear, and we will share the exhilaration of Steelers football, the excitement of Flyers hockey, the nail-biting finishes of F1, and the pride when we yell, we are Penn State. Welcome to the Steel Flyers show, the strangest combination of sports fandom since pineapple was put on pizza. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Steel Flyers All Sports Network, and boy, have we got another special one for you today. That's right, we're talking about predictions for who's going to win what trophy, part two. That's right, the other day we did uh, the Jack Adams and we did the Vesna Trophy, and we had some great guests on, and now we're going to talk about the Calder, which is the Rookie of the Year, and the Hart Trophy, which is uh, MVP. And we got some special guests for us today, folks. Yeah, we got the great Perlo Wisdom sitting in. How you doing, Perlo? Good, buddy. Doing yeah, man. excellent. Awesome sauce. And we got the man, the myth, the legend, Peyton on the radio has sitting in with us. Hey! Hey, oh. Oh, how you doing, buddy? Oh, I'm doing great. Uh, it's a great awesome. early morning video, and I can't wait to talk some hockey and talk yeah, some rookies and uh, to see it. who will win the MVP this year. Awesome sauce. Awesome sauce. What we'd like to do here is we're going to go around and talk about who we think uh, is going to take home the trophy. Uh, and uh, we're just going to get um, a, a great discussion going on here with what's going on. Um, these are some of the uh, most important trophies, I think. Um, uh, we, we talked about the uh, the uh, the Vesna Trophy and the Jack Adams in the previous show. This one here, this this trophy here, Calder, is the Rookie of the Year. And I think this, this is a, a pretty... Um, Pretty good trophy for for any particular player to get in the NHL. And we always like to see the young guys come up and play really well. And I'm going to start off with you, Peyton. Um, there's a number of players that are on the list here for the Rookie of the Year. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just going to go down the list of the ones that are on the list here. Uh, Kirill Kiprasov. Uh, uh, let me try that again. Kirill <laughs> Kaprazov. Uh, from Minnesota Wild, uh, Nadelkovic from Carolina, Jason Roberts from Dallas Stars, and Shesterkin from the Rangers. Okay, mm -hmm. those are the guys that are up for votes. Do you think, Peyton, with the fact that Kirill played four years in the KHL, mm -hmm. I mean, technically he qualifies for this award, but do you think he should be in this conversation? Yeah, I, I heard this debate topic when Pinarin won it uh, a few years back when McDavid, you know, he missed half of the season. And honestly, he should have won it even when he did miss half that season. And they gave yeah. it Pinarin, who, you know, played in the KHL for a long time. And I always just really dislike it because Kaprizov's 24 years old. And the next guy that's right behind him is 21 years old and Jason Robertson who has 40, uh, 45 points in 51 games this year. He's been analytically great. Defensively, he's not the greatest out on the ice, but offensively, right. Jason Robertson has been amazing for the Dallas Stars, who don't actually have you know, a lot of offensive weapons uh, there in Dallas. And I believe Jason Robertson could totally win the Calder uh, this year as well. Now, the biggest thing is Kaprizov has been amazing this year, and I, I won't doubt anything that Kaprizov does out there. I just don't think he's a rookie, especially, you know, putting up the amount of points he has in the KHL for the amount of years he has. He was a 40-point guy for four years in a row down there in the KHL, and he was amazing. Um, but this year, 51 points in 54 games is amazing, but I just don't see you as a rookie out there. I see you as uh, a grown man playing a game, and Jason Robertson and Josh Norris and those types of guys who are putting up amazing years as, you know, 21, 22-year-olds coming from the AHL or even from the WHL or wherever you're Whatever, from. yeah. You're, mm -hmm. you're coming from a junior. You're coming from a minor league hockey that is not as good as the NHL. And the KHL is not near as good as the NHL, but it's still a very high uh, tempo game there. Um, and if I were to, you know, I, I wish they were to implement a little bit of that in. If the guy plays for KHL, should discredit what he's doing throughout that year, especially for that rookie race. 
I would have Jason Robertson as my number one on winning the Calder just because of the fact his age and what he's been doing this year is absolutely yeah. amazing. He came yeah. out of nowhere, and no one was seen up until near the end of the season where he's up near with Kaprizov now. Uh, well, yeah. And absolutely amazing throughout the entire year. I, I agree. I agree with you 100%. Perlo, do you do you kind of feel the same way, or do you disagree with that, or are you okay with guys coming in from the KHL that have been played there four years in the KHL? They come into the NHL, they're considered a rookie, you know, and they light it up, and then they win the rookie of the year. I mean, what do you think about that, Perlo? Well, I mean, there's a there's a couple things to it that, first of all, it doesn't matter whether I agree with it or not. It's just a fact. Mm-hmm. One of the reasons why they allow this is you get bonuses for being being rookie of the year, right? They have yeah. bonuses in their contract and stuff like that. So it um, is it's more enticing for players to come over from the KHL where they mm-hmm. can make some pretty good money as it was, uh, which is why he didn't come over in the first place because he's making his making his family some money. He's probably getting paid more, quite a bit more over there. As a oh as a yeah guy, easily yeah because he's got to do the ELC here right you've got yeah. the minimum contract for the first three years so he's like why am I going to go over there for a million I don't know what his family life I don't bemoan him for what he did if he's making a couple extra million a year you don't know how long your career is going to be exactly so you stay over there make your money and stuff like that and so having them be able to get a rookie of the year or something like that is an additional amount of possibility for their income to an incentive to come over here that's part of the reason why i think at 24 years old or is he 24 he's 24 yeah. right yeah he's 24. 24 years old he's still available now i'll play devil's advocate here as well you you hear this all the time that when a player comes over from the khl or sweden or whatever if they struggle They'll say, or even when they come over now, be careful because, uh, you know, don't be too judgmental because they have to adapt to this North American lifestyle. Yeah. They have to adapt to this ice surface. They have to adapt to this style of play. And that is a pretty huge thing to adapt to. And Kaprizov did it effortlessly, really, mm-hmm. when he yeah. came over here, right? A lot yeah. of players don't do that. You know, even at 24 years old, it's not. It's very rare that a player comes over here and adapts easily to what he did. Now I don't know if it was easy for him, but it sure made it look easy. Yeah. <laughs> that was, you yeah. know. So, yeah, I like what Robertson did, but you take when you take into account that Robertson was born in North America, he grew up in North America, he knows the North America game. So there are some advantages he has, even though there's a three-year differential. Now, of course, Kaprizov was playing against uh, adults faster than Robertson was. So in, so in in that way, he's got a little bit of an advantage there. But he's not playing against men that play like they do in the NHL over at the KHL. There is nowhere near the hitting and stuff. In fact, you can make an argument that Robertson's more prepared for physical play playing in junior than Kaprizov is playing playing physical for physical play playing in the KHL so in that way it can kind of even itself out a little bit and so from that perspective I'm looking at it just from uh, you could uh, this is sort of like we were talking about yesterday with coaches you pick either one of these guys and I'm not going to argue yeah I'm with Mm -hmm. you I'm with you yeah I think you're really just flipping a coin here Uh, (laughs) but the big thing is, is of course, and I, I don't agree with this, and this is something we can talk about. I don't agree with this necessarily, but the fact is the Wild made the playoffs. So yeah. Kaprizov is going to get the award. And oh, that's yeah. really what it comes right down to. It's almost always the player that made the playoffs. Even if he's not as good as the one that didn't, he's going to get the award. So all things being sort of equal here, I think, he's, I think uh, Kaprizov will win it. And uh, also, he's more—he's going to take you out of your seat more than Robertson is. Robertson oh, yeah. plays, you know, Robertson plays a more straight line game, a really good one that I love watching. But if you're not like a a purist, like probably Peyton and I are, 
So maybe you don't appreciate that as much as like Kaprizov's, you know, going past two people doing a wraparound and scoring while everybody's standing on what just happened. Yeah, yeah right. Or, <laughs> or uh, you know, look, I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm a little bit torn here because I, I, I understand that when guys make that decision to stay in the KHL, they're doing it for their family. They're doing it for themselves. They're doing it to get that experience. And they're also doing it to make money. Okay. Right. Let's mm -hmm. face it. Signing for the KHL is way more lucrative than signing uh, an entry level contract here in the NHL. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All day long. Okay. So you can't blame these guys for wanting to stay over there and play because they know there's money being waved in their face, a very large sum of it, way more than what they're going to ever make here in the United States playing for the NHL in their first couple of years because they have to do that entry level contract. OK, mm -hmm. All right. so I don't have a problem with guys that go over there and do that. But what I do have a problem with is when they they spend those four years over there and then they come over here as a 24 year old where they've already played three years amongst men. You know, and, and, and you get a guy like Roberts who hasn't or Robertson who hasn't played against men until this year. You know what I'm saying? And, and is able to still do the same kind of things that he was able to do this year, put up the points he was able to do. I watched mm -hmm. a couple of the Dallas games. This kid is the real deal. He he's he's great on on passes. He's 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 just an all around good player. He makes that team better when he's out on the ice. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and that to me is a sign of a really good player. I don't care how young you are. Well, okay? I'd say he, he's more of a great leader than a yes, better, yeah, yes, sure. I agree. Now, do I agree with you that because of uh, Minnesota making the playoffs and things of that? Let me throw another name at you, and that is Nedeljkovic. Yeah. Now I know mm -hmm. that we haven't really talked a lot about goalies winning a rookie of the year. And how many of them are there historically? Few and far between. Right? Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. very many rookie goalies because they do the same thing. Goalies tend to play in their, you know, in the KHL or the Swedish teams longer to develop more so they can make more money. And then when they come over here, they're 27, 26, 28. You know what I mean? 28 years old was Roman Czech Monik, a rookie. Okay. But he was able to qualify because he played less games than anybody else. So he was able to, but he was 28 years old. Wait a minute. How does that work out? <laughs> but Nadelkovich from the Carolina Hurricanes, man, I, I really think you got to throw his name in there, at least for consideration. This guy has been amazing. He's earned 37 of possible 44 points mm -hmm. in his games. He's 15, 5, and 3. Mm -hmm. Now, for a rookie goaltender to come in there and play like that on a Carolina team that was really, I mean, we were looking at Morozik and going, oh, that's the best goal you got. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And this mm -hmm. guy just stepped up. What do you guys think about his chances? I'll start with Perlo first. I don't think his chances are good, but, uh, you know, I totally agree with you. He probably, I, I was wonder i thought carolina should have played him a lot more than they did but i mean here you go with a guy who's also 25 years old right yeah now, goal, goaltenders take longer so yeah. this is kind of the reason why you have this uh why we have this age where mm -hmm. you're a rookie because otherwise goaltenders wouldn't hardly have a chance to ever win it what, what, what I mean, goaltenders yeah. come in at a younger age to be able to do that unless you're going to give a like a more of a like change the age for goaltenders and you know reduce the age for uh forwards and defensemen which i don't see happening but yeah. um yeah nadelkovic honestly the thing that really blew me away about nadelkovic was last year he was not that great you know <laughs> like he really came out of nowhere like came out of not nowhere because everybody knew he was good and they believed in this guy quite a bit talked about him a lot but, I mean, he had an up-and-down career so far, and it just all came together like that for him this year. Um, that's what blows me away about Nadelkovic. Uh, but, I mean, yeah, there's there's not very likely he's going to get a chance with that defense in front of him, mm -hmm. even though you can make comparables of other goaltenders on his own team where he blows him away, right? Yeah. Yeah. But is that is that as much 
how poor their other goaltenders are or how good they <laughs> are. I yeah. go, I'll go as far as to say I think it's a little bit of both. I think Nedeljkovic is fantastic and uh, right now, and we'll see what he does in the playoffs, but I mean, sure, that uh, there are other, and there are other goaltenders I've always said have never really done that good, uh, so it's a little bit of both, but do I, I think he'll probably get the third. Third like, place. Yeah, a distant yeah. third to the to Okay, two, two. okay. What do you think, Peyton? What What do you think about all this uh, goalie situation here with Nadelkovic? And we didn't even we didn't even mention Shosturkin is on this list too. So yeah. there's yeah, two sh- goalies, and two forwards on the list. So yeah, they're I I I love this rookie class because there's a lot of underrated rookies, a lot of rookies that have absolutely came out of nowhere, like what we were talking with Jason Robertson and Nedeljkovic. I mean, I was always kind of looking at the guy as someone that could potentially be a a future guy for Carolina. Never really was able to get it out of the AHL until this year. Uh, also to note, we haven't seen a uh, rookie uh, goalie win the Calder since 2009 when Steve Mason won it with the Columbus Blue Jackets. I think it was <laughs> and that there season. You have it. <laughs> there was that season where he had like I think ten shutouts that year. He was absolutely amazing. And then also before that, back in two thousand four, Ed Raycroft won okay. the over there in Boston as well. Yeah. Um but yeah, Nadelkovich, I really enjoyed him this year. I don't think he's gonna win it. I put him I, I was gonna put him around fourth or fifth, uh just kind of right below Ty Smith or above him. Because okay. there's a lot of good rookies this year. Like, I think Josh Norris will probably land up in third. But he also has yeah. Sturkin as well. Sturkin is looking, he was looking amazing throughout the year uh, for the New York Rangers. He had a really rough start. He was not looking very good. He struggled. He kind of jumped right back up with a 916 and a, a 262 goals against the average. Not as good as what Nadelkovic had. Throughout right. the season, but he played, had he played, really good I think season. he played eleven more games though, or or nine more games though. He's got thirty-one yeah. games where yeah, he had thirty-five. Yeah, and the D- Delkovich only had like twenty-two or twenty-three. Yeah, yeah. okay, okay. And, and that's just also the same with Shesterkin as well. He's had some KHL time facing up against some big boys. Like I rather would give it to Nadelkovich, especially since Nadelkovich put up a nine thirty two save percentage. And <laughs> yes, it was only in twenty three games, but that is still pretty amazing when you're going up against teams like you know Florida and Tampa Bay, and you're able to shut those teams down. And yes, you're going to have a really good defensive core in front of you, and that's a blessing to have that in Carolina, especially as a young goalie developing, having a defensive core where you have, you know, Jacob Slavin and Dougie Hamilton in front of you will help you a lot. Yeah, I don't think. know. I don't know when the next time it will be for a goalie to win another Calder. I feel like it's going to be that uh, young kid in Jesper Wolstead who will be coming up into the draft this next year. He's supposed yeah. to be pretty highly touted, and I believe he could possibly, maybe even Jake Ottinger next year. I don't know how many games he played this year, or even Spencer Knight. But I was just going to uh, say Spencer Knight might be in that conversation too, if depending yeah. on what happens in Florida. Mm-hmm. I'm really uh, yeah. excited to see what happens, but uh, we got some young rookie goalies coming through the shrines and it's exciting to see here for the future of the NHL for the goalies wise. But uh, Nadelkovic, if he played a lot more games and, you know, he put up maybe 25, almost 30 wins, you could probably see this kid walking away with that Calder this year, but it was really, really stacked with the amount of good young rookie players that were playing this year. I agree. I agree a hundred percent. I'm also going to be on the fence here with you guys. I, I'm pretty much um, saying that Krill's going to probably win it. Um, just because of the mm-hmm. massive amount of points that he's done and and the fact that their team is in the playoffs and he still gets to play where everybody – and the, 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 even though Nadelkovic is still going to play, um, he's not going to play nearly as much as what um, Krill's going to play. And so yeah. may, maybe next year might be the year for the goalie rookie. You know, you never know. You just you never, never know. know. Right. But I am also with you on this. I think that this year was one of the uh, a good – um, batch of rookies to choose from. You know what I mean? There was quite a few players that could have been on this list that probably should have been on this list. But it, it's hard to look away from that 27 goals and 24 assists mm-hmm. in 51 games. That's hard to turn that away. Okay? One, one player that had me kind of looking away from it for a little while was Ty Smith. I mean, he was doing amazing stuff in New Jersey where they had no defensemen to support him. Exactly. Exactly. I, I liked mm-hmm. him yeah. there. 
And uh, I wanted to mention one little thing before we move on. I wanted to mention a guy that just just to mention him because I think in the he's going to be fantastic down the road, and he deserves a lot for his play. He was pretty fantastic. I bet you his analytics are fantastic, and that's Zub for Ottawa. I thought he mm-hmm. played. He has been absolutely awesome in Ottawa. He's improved at such a great level. It's uh, I I don't know what his I, I I don't know what his ceiling is now. It's going to be interesting to see. He's not going to get much play on it, but. Uh, I, I really loved watching him this year. I thought he was fantastic. Awesome. That's awesome. And, you know, here's the other thing, too. We got to see um, a, a large batch of young players come in towards the end of the season this year, more so, I think, than we did last year because of the AHL not playing and some of the junior leagues not playing this year. We got to see more of the younger players yeah. playing up with the big club this year than we ever have, I think, in a while. So at least mm-hmm. that gave us a, a large um, batch of rookies to look at. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Not maybe not necessarily for a long period of time, you know, like Krill and and Robertson, Robertson and all that. But at least we were able to see some of these young players come in and and make some impacts on their teams. You know, um, because of the COVID and because of not being able to play in the junior leagues and the lower, you know, the lower leagues and stuff. So. Well, there you have it, folks. I, I think we're all pretty much in agreement that Krill's going to probably win. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah uh, the the uh, the Calder Trophy this year for the NHL. So now we're going to move on to the next one. And that is the MVP, the Hart Trophy. And uh, there's probably going to be some heated debate on this. <laughs> I'm going to run down the players that are on the list that I see in front of me, okay? Uh, And this is based off of uh, the 2021 NHL Award Watch. Um, And the list that I have in front of me is Connor McDavid, uh, Austin Matthews, and Nathan McKinnon. Okay? Okay. Um, So do you think they're missing some players on this list? And if so, who do you put on? Um, I'm gonna start. Yeah, would honestly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me. I would honestly, I, I totally forgot about Nate McKinnon. I didn't even really look at him too much when I was making my rankings list. To be honest goals. with you, he's had an amazing season, 65 points. Uh, but another player that I think is missed out on that one is Sidney Crosby. Um, and I don't think he should win the heart. I think he should be in talks about it because this year he's been great defensively and great offensively out there, which, you know, Crosby, you know, some years are bad defensively. Some years are great defensively. When he was younger, he wasn't the greatest. He was more of a pure playmaker. But this year, you know, he's been more low key this year, which I think is what Crosby has been really enjoying this season. He only has uh, has 62 points in 55 games. Um, He's been playing analytically amazing this season offense and defensively carried the team when Malcolm was out of the lineup for a while there um, and, and is an amazing player. Uh, even better analytically than I feel Austin Matthews. Austin Matthews put up an historic season with 40 goals this season, and I still think there's a lot of players that could be nominated for this award. Uh, even Mitch Marner could be potentially nominated over his brother or Austin Leon Matthews. Or Leon Dreisaitl. Right. I, I feel Leo Dreisaitl could potentially be up there with 81 points. I feel like a lot of people are underrating him, but I feel a lot of people are looking at the analytics and seeing the defense and his bad defensive play is the part that's hindering him the yeah. most compared yeah, to you. everyone else on that list. That's why I'm here saying that Matthews, I feel looking at everyone else, looking at Crosby, looking at McKinnon, looking at Brad Marchand, looking at Marner, Every one of those players, Marner, Marchand, Crosby, even a little bit of Nate McKinnon, all those guys are better defensively than Matthews. And all those guys deserve, and we were always talking last year when Leon Dreisaitl was talked about winning the MVP, everyone was saying he's too bad defensively. Then why are we just, you know, giving it to Austin Matthews, even though he's having, you know, a very mediocre season defensively when Crosby's having an elite level defensive season to even to the point where he could potentially be in that talk to the Selkie with how good of a defensive season he's having. Um, but I feel like there's a lot of players that could potentially, you know, back up. I There's only one true winner for this MVP this year, and that's Connor McDavid have 102 points in 54 games. But for the guys that are nominated behind him, 
there's there could be a huge list. It the list could go yeah. on about yeah, the yeah, amount yeah. of players that really do deserve that MVP for Matthews to Crosby to McKinnon to Marner to Marshan. I think every one of those players do deserve a little bit of credit for that award, but there's only one true winner this year. I got you. Perlo, what do you think about that list? Do you think we should add some folks? Like Peyton said, I'm pretty sure you're going to have a couple guys on there you would like to see. Well, you mentioned Marshan, but I bet you if you ask people in the room in Boston, it would be he wouldn't even be the leader. Of, he wouldn't be the MVP of his own team. That would be Bergeron. Bergeron, to me, is the epitome of what a captain is supposed to be. And that with everything that went on in Boston this year, I think he should get a lot more play than he's getting, but he won't because he never does. And I don't know why. Uh, he's a he talk about Selkie candidate. I mean, he's always a Selkie candidate. He's mm-hmm. one of the best defensive forwards of all time, uh, and he's just an amazing leader. Leadership sometimes, quite often, doesn't go doesn't show up on stats as much. Right? It doesn't. So, it doesn't. So you're talking about the most valuable player to your team. It, you're talking about the player that that makes the other players great around them. That rallies players. That that uh, works to uh, make their team better in every way possible and uh, with individual people and stuff like that. I definitely will say McDavid, there's no question. Mm-hmm. <laughs> McDavid is for sure. Um, now, as far as what Matthews does there, um, I think defensively he's been asked to do a different role. It's almost like, because it's weird, because Matthews is really usually plays a different way than he did before. It almost seems like Heap has said, you know what, I want you to take risks and score goals this year. That's really mm-hmm. what it seems like to me. So in that way, you can't really blame the player for that. I mean, Ovechkin has been was, was uh, ribbed over that quite a bit before Trotz came in, but he was just doing what his coach told him to do. Yeah. His coach told him to take risk and score because you can do it. So do it. I mean, that's just the way it is. I don't that. So it's not really like that. I take that into consideration when I'm doing this. I totally agree with, uh, with, uh, and I usually do with Peyton. We usually agree on everything, but, uh, but uh, Crosby should really get a, a lot of play this year because again, Look what Pittsburgh went through this year. I mean, injuries to Malkin, all of that stuff like that seems to happen every year. Yeah. And uh, and and I I also think that we'll get into that another time. But he mentioned the thing about the Selkie. His defensive numbers this year are just insane. And mm-hmm. uh, it, no, Crosby. It's, Crosby's overall yeah. game, uh, the way to me, the way he's rallied that Pittsburgh team. And made everybody feel like they believe in themselves. And I think he's part of it. It's not just Sullivan and Crosby. Is I could see him being a coach after his career if he wanted to go that way. Uh, he just adds so much in so many different levels to the team that okay. I definitely, yeah, that he's he's fantastic that way. One of the names that you guys haven't mentioned, mm-hmm. okay, and I'm I'm actually kind of surprised is Stone from Vegas. Oh, I was going to mention that right after this. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, well, so yeah. thank you for saving that for me then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because what this guy has done in Vegas, mm-hmm. I mean, he's basically put the team on his back and said, we're going to go and we're going to go through me. And every – and look, when you watch this team, if he's having a good game, they're rocking. If he's mm-hmm. not having a good game, they're not doing so well. You understand what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. I, I really think that I, I do agree with what you guys are saying about Crosby. When you look at his his defensive numbers are up and his offensive numbers are down. OK, and that's kind of what happened with with Ovechkin when he got a new coach in there and they said, hey, maybe you should play a little bit more defense. Mm-hmm. Suddenly, you know, he was playing more responsible, playing a 200 foot game. Yeah, his goals went down, but mm-hmm. but he became this huge all around massive great player because he could play a little bit of defense underrated that's what i mean it's amazing so i i like stone for this i i don't think he's even going to be in the conversation okay um uh but i really think he should be because mm-hmm. of how how things have gone in vegas for him this year and what he's been able to accomplish there he got the captain he, he got the captaincy uh at the beginning of the season this year and he has basically just stepped out on the ice and has been one of their best players mm-hmm. 
Okay. Yeah, aside I, I, from aside from you know uh, Laner and and Flurry, uh, their goaltending. You know what I mean. But that that's kind of where I'm at with him. So I do agree with you guys. You can't deny the massive amounts of statistics that Connor McDavid has put up this year. You can't deny that. And and if you take that away from Edmonton, they're not making the playoffs. That's what I mean. If you take Austin Matthews away from Toronto, uh, maybe. They got, they got, maybe. They got Tavares. They, they got Tavares who's been putting up a point per game since he came to Toronto. And then you have okay. Nylander and Marner. Right. I, right. You got a lot of good players to kind okay. of support Matthews if he does go down. You take Nathan McKinnon out in Colorado. Think when he was out, when he was out, they didn't play real well, did they? Yeah. They right. could make the playoffs, but it's unlikely that they will. Right. Now, what about Vegas if you take Stone out? Or or Pittsburgh if you take Crosby out? If you take Crosby out of no Pittsburgh, no they're way. done. They're done, done. They're, they're done. done. Absolutely no doubt about it. That's why right. I have them as my second. Yeah, okay. All right. Vegas, if you take Mark Stone out of the team, especially for their offensive core, it would just be defense. It yeah. would be Low really reliant on Petrovic, <laughs> though. What? Yeah. Theodore and all those guys, they would be more reliant on those and their goaltending. But that's I think how they're... I look at an MVP. If you took this player off of that team, how would the team be without that player? I would say that it's possible that they don't, because the reason why you bring up where we bring up Stone, besides his numbers, when you watch Vegas, he is quite obviously the leader of that team like yeah. when you watch the game you can see that stone is the energy of the spiritual everything of that team right so it's hard to uh, it's hard to judge what that team would be without him but i don't think it would be anywhere near as good as it is he just has an energy that keeps everything in its right place all the time crosby's yeah. like that as well in a different I sort agree. of way i but, agree uh, but yeah, so I put them kind of equal in that regard for that. I don't think there's any, I can go, McDavid is getting that now on top of all of his point producing. Yeah. I'm starting to see McDavid also be that, that guy as well on the ice. He has matured so much this year. If you yes, listen to him, has. if you listen to him in interviews and stuff like that, it's just like this, what is this guy going to be? This guy's going to be uh, – like, he hasn't even reached it yet. I don't know what – like, he's a, he looks like the, the first guy in that maybe we've ever seen where, like, you're almost like Michael Jordan where he can almost win a game all by himself. And in hockey, that just doesn't happen, right? Well, he practically has this year, hasn't he? <laughs> not just game, not just game. He could win a Stanley Cup. Like, he's by himself almost. Yeah. He's getting – that amazing that yeah. it's it's getting iconic it's, and, and, and some players around him that have done nothing but accentuate and make things better for him because mm -hmm. putting him with dry was and having dry on that team as being the next level after mcdavid you know what i'm saying so they've, they've added some pieces to there so where he doesn't necessarily have to be the focus you know what i mean even though he is I mean, mm -hmm. let's face it, but th they have depth there, okay, mm -hmm. to where he doesn't have to be the man, yeah. right, even though he is, right? That team, that team is not really that good on paper in a lot of okay. ways. So, okay. I mean, he's, okay. he's, but they do have some better players than last year. It's better than last year. Yeah. And I come up, Peyton will chime in on it too. Next year, watch out. But, oh, yeah. Our depth scoring this year, I think goals expected this year. We have a 62% with him on the ice. With him out, uh, without McDavid on the ice, it's down to 42 for goals Ooh. expected uh, for goal share on that team without McDavid <laughs> on the ice. So our depth okay, is definitely not the greatest, <laughs> especially analytically. We got a lot of defensive guys on our bottom six with Carla and Haas and Getting Ryan McLeod added into the uh, to that depth, who does exactly add a bit of an offensive touch. 
but he brings more of a defensive touch to the team. So um, McDavid is a big guy for the Edmonton Oilers, especially offensively, and that's why just showing that stat just in general, I think he deserves to win the MVP because of what he has done carrying the Edmonton Oilers on his back this season and really being a pivotal player and and a big leader for that Edmonton Oilers team. That Oilers team looks a lot happier than what they have ever have in a long time. I've never yes. seen that amount of smiles out on the ice uh, for no. that Oilers team in a long time. And it is a big reason because of McDavid is been doing great this year. And he, yeah. this team looks like it's enjoying playing hockey, which yeah. is something that, you know, as an Oilers fan myself, I have not seen in a long time. You can thank Dave Tippett for that too. Dave yeah, Tippett, Dave, Dave Tippett has always created that energy in a team and it looks weird when he's doing it. And you're like, what's he doing? But in the <laughs> end, that's exactly what happens. Arizona was the same way. People yeah. enjoyed playing for Tippett and the way he uh, got people believing in themselves and stuff like that. I wanted to mention one more player. I don't know how much time we have, but I wanted to mention one more player that hasn't been brought up here, and I really think he should. In fact, I'd put him higher than some of the other players we're talking about. Because this team, and I've talked about it a lot, they have not looked good this year as far as I'm concerned. I would say... Andre Vasilevsky should be in this. Andre Vasilevsky, I think it's a pretty good Of course, goaltenders are hard because you, you know, you take out a, anybody's number one goaltender and the team might not make the playoffs, right? Yeah. But he's doing stuff in Tampa Bay this year with a Tampa Bay that has not been playing well. They, they've been outplayed a lot this year. Vasilevsky's yeah. bailed me, bailed him out like crazy. Yeah. It's the reason why Cooper kept on throwing McElhaney out in times when they didn't know it was going to happen. It was him basically saying, "We cannot rely on Vasilevsky like this." You know, yeah. that Cooper was basically saying, "If you're going to play like this, we're going nowhere." Right. So you know, Vasilevsky's not going to win the cup for very seldom as a goaltender, not the way they're playing in front of him anyways. He can, but not the way they're playing in front of him. Mm -hmm. But if it wasn't for Vasilevsky this year, I don't think Tampa Bay made, makes the playoffs. And I don't mean, like, take him out. I mean, put any other, most goaltenders in the league in there, and they're probably not win, uh, win as many games, yeah. 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 So. yeah, he went on a 12-game bender there yeah. where he won 12 games in regulation. OK, in a row. Now, yeah. I don't, I've never heard of a goalie doing that in, in a really it's been a really long time since I've heard anything like that. You know who else we haven't really talked about? I know that Austin Matthews was on the list, but we haven't really talked about Nathan McKinnon either. And I really feel that if you take him off of Colorado, they are not even the same team. No, I, they're not. They especially down the center. They got a lot of strong wings, but their next best center, center man is. The next best centerman is Caudry, and I guess for the future you're going to be having Newhook, who it was looking Looks amazing good. his his uh, past couple debut or his uh, debut there. Uh, he's been looking good. Uh, I think he could definitely be a, a future guy to go alongside of Nate McKinnon up that center. But if, if they lose Nate McKinnon, you lose your best centerman, and you lose a big key of your depth. Right now, because Cadre's having to move up, and you're going to have to move up. You know, maybe JT Conf or move him up the lineup. You're going to be losing a big player, Nate McKinnon, without a doubt. Um, you know, like I said, like you could throw this MVP at multiple t people if you take McDavid out of the the out of the out of the way, and he did he didn't have that 100 point season. You could look at a lot of people at like, contention for that MVP. It, it's amazing this year what the the talent that we've been seeing in the NHL from McKinnon to Matthews to McDavid to to Stone. Just about everyone in this league have, you know, really we've been seeing a new generation of all stars, and it's exciting to see. Uh, uh, especially how many people could be MVP this year is just the change in hockey that we've been slowly uh, seeing. Yeah, that's a great point too, man, because we're starting to see players take that responsibility. We're starting to see more and more of those players taking that responsibility. You know what I mean? And so that's why I think we're going to see this. Um, as as the years go on, It's this is going to be a tighter race as the years go on. I think it's even it's tight now. 
I'm not. I'm not sure about that. I think McDavid wins for the next seven years. And oh yeah. Okay. So, well. But, all right. As as I'm as trying. As, as far as who's going to be second, maybe yeah, there'll be a lot of people out there. But uh, unless McDavid gets hurt, it's going to be like it was back in the Eisenman or sorry, uh, Lemieux and Gretzky days, especially Gretzky, where there's yeah. so many amazing players that. that that didn't end up getting MVPs because they were they were just happened to be playing during that time. During that, but when there was like it's fifteen other cups. guys that could have been, yeah, you know. And <laughs> watch, oh, we got this kid Bedard coming up now. Holy crap! Oh, Bedard is going to be exciting. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. No matter how you slice it, an MVP is somebody that you know. If you take them away from their respective team, things are going to be a heck of a sight different. And it's not just because of the fact that they're not on the ice. It's what they bring to the table. And and we're looking at some players here that we all feel either they could potentially win the, the trophy themselves or will be in the running in the next couple of years. Um, but we all pretty much agree that Connor McDavid's going to take it this year. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Okay. When, all right. when, it, when it isn't amazing that McKinnon is – McKinnon – is not the best hockey player from where he lives. <laughs> Sydney, him and McKinnon, like he is now probably, but over his career so far, he hasn't. Kevin okay. Crosby, the same I was area. just gonna say yes, but that's gonna soon be that's gonna soon be different because Crosby's coming down now and McKinnon's coming up. So. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, we got to talk about the Calder, uh, the Rookie of the Year, and we all think that's going to be Krill from Minnesota. And then we talked about the Hart, and we all feel that that's going to probably be Connor McDavid, which both players are very deserving of each trophy. Um, we we wanted to bring this out here. Where this was just a, a discussion about who we think could potentially win, and our predictions are probably going to be, uh, you know, Connor McDavid win winning the uh, Hart. And uh, Kirill Kaprizov winning the uh, the Calder uh, for the NHL awards this year. Uh, I'm your host, Steel Flyers. We've got the great Perlo Wisdom. Perlo, how can we follow you where we can get all your great stuff? I can just come back in a couple hours and watch us both on the show. Watch us all. <laughs> all uh, right. How can we follow Twitter. you on uh, Twitter? Oh, uh, Perlo's NHL P O W is my Twitter account. Yeah, uh, you man. can come join me on Facebook too. I got the Pearl, the uh, Pearl, what what is that called? Just look up Pearl Wisdom, wisdom on, Club, the Pearl Wisdom I'm Group. I'm pretty sure there won't be. I'm pretty sure there won't be any other Pearl Wisdom groups out there. No, pretty probably sure. not. Check so, them out on Facebook though. Check uh, check me out on Facebook there, and of course you can check out everything on SteelFlyers.com. We're all part of the Steel Flyers Network, uh, sure. which is just rocking. So you guys really want to make it? You, you really want to go mm -hmm. check it out. People yeah, are, man. People are sure. walking there like crazy. So check I'll out www.steelflyers.com. You, uh, you won't be disappointed. Nope. And Peyton, on the radio, the man, the myth, the legend. How can we follow you? Where can we get all your great stuff, buddy? Uh, so, yeah, you can go check out my Twitter at Peyton Radio. And, of course, uh, Peyton on the radio on YouTube, TikTok, uh, and so much more. So, yeah. Uh, you can go check me out on there. Got some great content, and uh, I cannot Ooh. wait for uh, Mr. Perlow's show. It should be a fun one. I agree. You can also check Peyton out. We're going to do an announcement here in a little while here. Oh, yeah. Where, where Peyton has joined our website, and you'll be able to go check out Peyton's page. Uh, yeah. That's www.steelflyers.com slash link slash Peyton on the radio. And you'll be able to check out all his stuff there. And... Uh, get in touch with him. Watch all of his great videos. He he's one of the the, the best ones, guys. We, we're really thankful and glad to have him on here. Thank you, Perlo, for joining the show. Appreciate all your time. This is Steel Flyers from the Steel Flyers All Sports Network, and this was our Calder and Hart Trophy prediction show. Uh, I'm your host, Steel Flyers. Just remember, folks, stay strong, stay safe, and hang tough. <laughs>